find it frustrating that when you want to have a shower and you realize you haven't got the fan on you turn it go to turn it on but you need to have the lights on for that to be powered so you need to get somebody else to switch the lights on and then you can put the fan on to have your shower simple problem but sometimes you might have the curtains open and you're in the van by yourself you don't want to get dressed again just to go down to the other end of the van to turn the lights on. So the solution was to buy another one of these wireless switches. They're readily available. Um, and as they're wireless, you can program them to the wireless light hub. Wireless hub is uh, under our, our seat, kitchen seat. It looks like that. On our van, all the internal lights are attached to channel one. I won't go through how you program that. The instructions are online, not very clear. I eventually got it to work and I'm not really quite sure how I got it to work, but it's a matter of pressing various buttons and holding them down till various lights flash. But on the third attempt, it magically worked. This wireless switch is now programmed to channel one and you can see I can turn off all the lights with that. Fan switch is on, I can now turn the lights on and off from the bathroom area. And it's simply a matter of deciding where to mount it. Ours is a JK Journey 16 foot with a full on suite, so we decided to mount it approximately there next to the shower door and I'll do that next you can see I can now just reach out of the shower turn the lights on and the fan the wireless remote switch itself is fairly simple obviously no wires and the backing plate or the front plate comes off quite readily here's the edges you can actually just pull the backing plate off with your fingers um, or a screwdriver if necessary, flat bladed, but you don't really need that much force. There's also a locking ring there, but by default this one didn't come with a screw. I don't think a screw is necessary, but there might be a screw in that end which would need to be undone. So it's just a matter of screwing that onto the wall, plugging the backing plate back in. The batteries are simply two button batteries in that compartment there. Don't know how long they last for. We've had our van for two years. Um, interestingly, if the LED here blinks after turning it off or on, that means the batteries are going flat. Choosing the right screw is always a little problematic. I always like to use stainless steel screws. So I'd go with these little short ones. About that length, but countersunk would be ideal. You don't want them too long so they go right through the wall. So in this installation if they're too long they will poke through the wall so that obviously won't uh, but it's going to be inside the backing plate so it's going to come back but it should be okay. It's problematic I'll get some more that are countersunk. See the, you can see the backing plate has countersunk holes so when I put those screws which aren't countersunk it won't have much bite in the timber, but it's better than going right through the other side and being visible from the kitchen. If you're not a handy person, the uh, old trick of the trade is to put a bit of tape on the drill and measure it, so you're not going to drill too far through the timber. So you can use the backing plate as a template where you're going to put the switch I'm going to put this little grub screw hole to the back here because if it was at the front it'd just be a little bit ugly, it'd be visible all the time. I don't intend to use it if at some stage the switch starts falling off, which I don't think is going to happen. I can always unscrew it, put it up the other way. So just carefully mark the positions. So that top one I need to mark fairly carefully. I'm actually going to drill this hole at the bottom once I've screwed the top hole in, so I'll use this as a template. 
So it's probably more accurate there. But that's the one I need to drill first. You can see I've got the uh, electrical tape there which will mark the distance safely so I don't drill right through the bulkhead here. Now again, if you're not a handyman, often the drill will skate when you first start to drill and make a mess. So if the wood is timber is soft, you can just dent it with the drill to begin with. And then don't drill too hard at first, just get a little pilot going. When you're more confident, you can drill. With that little grub screw hole at the back here. Now, don't drop the screws. I always try and use stainless screws for all the work on a caravan. Do camping down by the beach pays off in the long run. They're pretty cheap these days anyway. Get them from Bunnings. Marine grade if you have a choice. Now you may, know, may have realised I haven't drilled the second hole. I'm actually going to drill it with this template in place. That's the easiest way to make sure you get it in the right place. You just have to be careful you don't damage the template itself, just making extra sure that it's straight here. Pressing it to dent the timber. You saw that it moved around a bit, the template, but the hole was already started. And now I can screw that in and straighten the template up. Or the backing plate, I should say. It's no longer a template. Now countersunk screws would be ideal in this situation. But I didn't have any, so I'm just going with these round heads. So that's now fairly secure. Again, I don't want that uh, grub screw hole showing, so I'm going to uh, leave my finger there, so see where it goes. I'm going to put that towards the back here. It's just a matter of clipping that on. And lights go on and off. So it's probably worth explaining that you can add extra wireless switches to the same circuit. Um, again, the instructions aren't terribly clear from Sphere, but it can be done. So here I am at the front of my van, not down at the, sh the, the toilet end, and you can see, I don't know whether you can see the lights going off, I'll change the angle, but the lights are still going off with the original switches. So I haven't interfered with that programming at all, although you can, you can uh, wipe the programming completely out. So I've just added an extra switch to the same channel.